Hey, so I know I already wrote about a lot of this, but I wanted to do a video too for those of you who like to just listen to someone talk to you. And so um, I just wanted to begin by saying that I think when I went to Mayo Clinic, I probably had a horrible attitude. Um, I think I was so sick of going to the doctor and didn't know quite what to expect. And, you know, you hear about how great Mayo is, but you still have that attitude of, what all your experiences were like from when you've been to the doctor before and um, this not getting answers and being frustrated and not feeling well and um, just um, progressively getting worse. And two of the things I think I want to say before I get into just explaining what my diagnosis is, is that this. One of the things that Mayo Clinic did that a lot of things that businesses do, and I know I do with my school too, is collaboration. And that so many people came together and all these doctors came together and talked to each other and one talked to another doctor and this one talked to another doctor and they referred to this doctor and it was just this wonderful experience of everybody coming together and trying to solve problems and figure out what was wrong with me and, um, coming up with a diagnosis that made sense and um, getting me on a track to feel better and have better health. And so I think um, it just was such a um, great way to really reinforce that word collaboration, that how important it is in every aspect of any business or um, corporation or in medicine or in the schools or any anything that you do um, to, to work together to solve problems um, it's just important that you know um, two heads three heads five heads are better than one so um, and then the other thing is that um, I think that our bodies are our temples you know and we really have to fight for um, getting well and I think the other thing that I learned is that if you aren't feeling well and you aren't getting answers you need to keep asking questions and you need to keep finding second and third and fourth opinions and um, this has been going on with me for about five and a half years and I've gone from one to two to three to four to five to six I, I can't I think this is my one two three four fourth or fifth opinion um, before I've gotten the, the right one. And so I think you just have to keep on trucking and if you aren't getting better, then there's something wrong and you need to keep finding um, the right answer. So um, just, you know, know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and, and um, there are answers out there. And so tons of medication is not the right answer. And I know because I've had tons thrown at me and I've learned that um, tons of medication is not the answer. So anyway, to go through my, my um, diagnoses. So functional, uh, um, functional disorder, which affects the nervous system structure. They talk a lot about functional because all of my organs, everything is fine, but they don't function correctly. So my organs, as far as my nervous system goes, just do, do not function correctly. So um, right now that's where I am with that. Um, I have fibromyalgia. They believe I probably have fi probably have had fibromyalgia since I was um, fairly young. Um, I met all the criteria, full blown, full blown fibromyalgia. Um, I went to a day and a half clinic, um, was assessed by a doctor and a nurse um, for, for this, and. Um, they, the one thing that really stuck with me regarding the fibromyalgia is that they, they were kind of comparing it to this. When you learn a letter M, you always know that it's the letter M. When you, with fibromyalgia, it's like when you learn pain, that's how you associate pain. So when you're at a very young age, your brain is very malleable. So you are learning pain if you experience a, a, a specific event, um, maybe a traumatic event that was where pain was really, your emotional pain was at a really 
um, an intense level or your physical pain is an intense level. That's how you associate pain. So when you experience it later, and then if you have any stress that is on top of it, it's compounded. So um, fibromyalgia is a functional brain disorder. It is not something that can be cured. Um, it is something that can be managed, but the, it does um, have a lot of symptoms that go along with it, like fatigue, you know, there's hair loss, headaches, facial pain, sensitivity to sounds, um, um, stiffness, numbness, tingling in your hands and your feet, dizziness. There's all kinds of things that look like another illness, but they're actually fibromyalgia. So it can um, seem like something else and it can be hard to diagnose. The doctor actually told me that about 33% of the population um, does have, di have fibromyalgia. And it does kind of go, sometimes coincide with a lot of the rare autoimmune illnesses that we are trying to help within the foundation. So um, it's very interesting. There's, they're making a lot of progress um, in learning a lot about fibromyalgia. Um, I have chronic uh, multi-factor fatigue, insomnia, anxiety, deconditioning, orthostatic intolerance, um, polypharmacy. I did some video on that about medication. I had about 25 medications. I was, they, they were, I had way too many medications, multivitamins that I didn't need, um, blood pressure medication that I did, didn't need, autoimmune medication that I didn't need because I didn't have an autoimmune illness, um, all kinds of things that were causing a lot of other issues in my body. So now I've had to, now I'm weaning myself off of all of these medications, um, which is a long process. Um, red rum, which is rectal evacuation disorder, rumination, um, and dyssynergia. So these two things and irritable bowel syndrome. So all of this stuff is, a lot of my GI has been focused on the upper part of the GI, not the lower. So what's happened is my smooth muscles um, quite don't know what to do. Um, so I have pel pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, they don't, my pelvic floor muscles don't relax. Um, my gastric, I have gastric accommodation issues. So my stomach muscle, my stomach doesn't expand. And then when I eat, the food comes back up. And then I have like this bubble in my chest. So then I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack, but it doesn't come all the way up, but it comes up to like right here. And then that's just where I couldn't eat. So it causes this vicious cycle. So what's happening is there's going to be a lot of intensive therapy to try to retrain all of these muscles inside to work the right way. So um, functional tremor disorder, I've developed a tremor. Um, again, functional tremor in my hand. So a lot of times you'll see my hand will start shaking like this or my, and my, and my left will start doing it too. A lot of times it's when I'm doing too much or I get tired or even in, in, it increases when I get anxious. Um, mild distal autonomic neuropathy, primarily in my toes and my fingers. Um, and then I have a GJ tube in place, which is going to be changed to a J tube. Um, a GJ is in your stomach, um, as it's in my stomach. The J would be moved to just my intestine. Um, this would be something that we're working on right now, and it's a big, uh, it's a, this is a big ordeal. So I'm not sure how this is going to work, but the good news is, is that the goal is that I'm going to be off of all the tubes, hopefully within the year, and be able to start eating again if all of this therapy works and, um, I can start getting my pelvic floor muscles to work, my the rumination to go away and be able to um, not have the food come back up and um, be able to eat. So um, that's something that's just a very slow process. So uh, I'm starting physical therapy tomorrow for the fibromyalgia and the pelvic floor. Um, using biofeedback. Biofeedback is a really big thing they do at Mayo, and they do they do it at this physical therapy office, which is really exciting. 
Um, and I'm also planning to go back to Mayo Clinic for about five to six weeks um, for uh, pain rehabilitation. It's a pain rehabilitation center where they work on with about fibromyalgia, the deconditioning, um, weaning off the a lot of the medications that I'm on um, with the pain management and the chronic fatigue and all of that and the chronic pain. Um, working on the anxiety, the insomnia, trying to have a balance, more of a balance in my life. Um, and then um, also, and then working exercise back in because I'm totally deconditioned. And then also um, there's a two weeks of pelvic floor with the dysinertia. It's a very intense program where they work on just your pelvic floor muscles and it's with biofeedback. So, and then there's another biofeedback that I'm going to do with diaphragmatic breathing, which is another big thing that they work on is the diaphragmatic breathing. So these are all of the things that are going on. So it's exciting. Um, I've talked a lot about the light at the end of the tunnel and um, I always felt stuck and I don't feel stuck anymore. So it's exciting. And um, I just hope that um, some people can take away some positive things from some of this. And um, just, you know, remember that your body is your temple and, uh, you know, treat it with love and kindness and um, be careful what you put in it and ask tons of questions and um, pursue every avenue. And if you ever have any questions about going to Mayo Clinic or any of the things that they do there, or if, you know, I'm going back there, if there's any literature that you'd like me to pick up for you, they have tons of pamphlets, free everything, so I'd be glad to pick up anything for you. Um, they, they, they're just so helpful and wonderful, and there's just so much education and, and, and learning they offer for free, and um, so much about affirmations and meditation and really um, a lot of about breathing and um, things that you just choose I, I, I've chosen to ignore and they're so important so um, anyway uh, that's kind of where I am right now with all of this with the health thing so it's my message to you I'm gonna stop because it's 12 minutes long 13 remember collaboration take care of your body and don't take so many drugs <laughs>